Hello, everybody, and welcome to At Home With, presented in part with the cooperation and support of the great corporate partners of the North Carolina Football Club. My name is Dean Linky, longtime voice of North Carolina FC, forever appreciative of you, our fans, and that includes the Oak City supporters and the Renegados, all of our season ticket holders, and I hope to see all of you real soon. And in addition to each and every member of the North Carolina Football Club, from the owner and management right through the players and support staff, I thank you and I offer a special thank you to our VP of Broadcasting, Jorge Acuna, for his work putting together this series at home with. I'm digging it and I hope you are too. Let me tell you folks, I am super excited about our guest today, arguably one of the best stories in soccer period, let alone our club a young man who was told he couldn't do it on numerous occasions, and he kept on doing it, kept on making it. Of course, I'm talking about the face of the franchise, the great Nasby Abadawi. Let's roll the video, Jorge. Oh, back in, good ball here, Abadawi, and how about North Carolina FC, Nasby Abadawi. See what can happen. Miller's got Taylor overlapping run. He knew it was there. Taylor back over. Oh, Nazmi Abadawi. And how about North Carolina FC? We'll see what can happen. All right. He grew up here after a heroic story from his parents. He played youth soccer here. He went to high school here. He played collegiately here at NC State. He was a fan of the then named Carolina Railhawks. And now he's simply the man of North Carolina FC. How about our captain, Nazvi Abadawi? Welcome to At Home With Naz. Dean, thank you, man. It's good to hear your voice again. Uh, I miss playing just as much as I'm sure that you miss commentating. So I'm glad you're able to do this and stay somewhat active in this, uh, in this moment. Amen, Naz. I'm honored to be with you. I'm a tremendous fan. You really bring glory to the work that I do because uh, I've always wanted to be around the best athletes and you are simply a special story. And, you know, right off the bat, before we get to what you've been doing and how you've been dealing with the quarantine, as you know, I get pretty fired up when I can say Nasby Abadawi. And I want to go ahead and just get that out there as well, because I realize from your origin that it is actually pronounced a little bit differently. But I do want you to tell everybody that Abadawi is what you're rolling with, because as you and I've had that discussion, you know, I'm rolling with it. Yeah, Abadawi is, I love it. I love the way that you say it. Um, you've called my my games for years now. I mean, for the last probably seven years, except for one. So, I mean, um, I, I love the way that you pronounce my name and, uh, and the way that we go about it. But what is it, like, if you were in Palestine or where you grew up, like, where, how would you say it? <laughs> so, the way they come to it, like, it's more like uh, Al-Bedawi. <laughs> um, and, and then so uh, I've had people say Alba, Albadawi as well. Um, and then, but uh, it's a little bit different, obviously, but the majority in, in the United States have said Albadawi. All right. Before we get to the story of your family, which I think is worth repeating, when they started hearing Abadawi and they now hear it and they maybe if they're listening now, they just heard it. What's their take on it? They're like, no, no, it's really the way you just said it. Or is it okay? No, to be honest, I think they just think it's cool like I do that uh, that I have anyone even saying my name. And then my dad at first, my dad was the one who was like, no, like say it correctly the way it's supposed to be. But then I think after he heard a few people try, uh, he was like, no, no, Alba is better. And then so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, they're, they're very happy now with, with the way that it's said. All right. Well, before we get to the other big news in the Abu Dhabi family, how has it been? Because this is unprecedented time. And with that, we definitely want to send our deepest sympathies and prayers to all those affected by this pandemic. And we definitely want to salute those on the front line. Our medical personnel are just incredible. But how have you been passing time during this quarantine, Nas? Yeah, to be honest, for me, it's been all about family time. Um, with our jobs that we do, we travel quite often, uh, whether it's for away games or, or for me, I've been fortunate enough to play for the Palestinian national team over the last couple of years. And that includes traveling across the world. So I'm gone for normally two weeks at a time or so. Um, so not, not playing games right now is giving me all the time in the world with my wife and my son and, my, and our immediate families that are in town as well. So, I mean, it's been great being able to see my son grow up. And, and uh, as much as I miss playing, 
that's definitely the biggest blessing that has come from this. So happy for you, your beautiful wife, and now your beautiful son. I think we have a picture from Mother's Day. Soak that in, everybody. That is a good-looking family right there. Nadal, named after your father, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, named after named after the big man. So um, hopefully my dad's a great man. Hopefully he lives up to his names, not as grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly said. So remind everybody the incredible story of your mom and dad, the situation they were in and, 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 you know, we've got time here now. So just remind everybody. Yeah. So my parents are originally Palestinian. Um, they were living in Kuwait when Iraq invaded Kuwait in 1990, the U S embassy called my parents on their, on their home phone at the time and said, Hey, you have three hours to get to the airport and you can bring one bag if you want to go to the United States. Uh, so, I mean, those times are a lot different where it's not like you have Skype or FaceTime or even mobile phones to text, you know, uh, there's no way to let the family know you're going other than by going to their house to say goodbye. So with three hours, I mean, they packed as quickly as they could and try to say goodbye to their family members, but there was really no time. I mean, this is a, a life or death situation in their eyes. It's a life changing situation. Uh, they had my two older sisters with them who were, I think five and three at a time. And then they, they did it. They made the move. They came here. They left everything that they knew in Kuwait behind and decided to make a move here. Um, and then the amount of hard work they put to be able to provide for me and my sisters and, and to really grind it out. And I mean, both of them had very respectable, re, uh, respectable degrees coming here. And it was hard for them to find jobs in, in, in their degrees because they were from Kuwait and not from the United States. So just them adapting and doing whatever it took to be able to provide for our family really is uh, – really is such an inspiration that I, I find myself having no need to ever complain about, about where I'm at, thankfully. Yeah. And then remind us where they first landed and how they found their way to North Carolina. Yeah. So it, it's pretty funny, actually, the story. So my, I have two older sisters, not the oldest one was born in Kuwait. The middle one uh, was actually born in Kansas on vacation. <laughs> um, so they came to Kansas. Uh, my, my uncle, my mom's brother was living there. They had my sister born there, and they flew out 10 days later to go back to Kuwait. That is the reason why the U.S. Embassy called my family, because they had my sister that was born in Kuwait. And my family did it for a purpose, because they were kind of in no man's land in Kuwait. I mean, you don't get citizenship by living there. You have to be born, in, you have to, be born to a Kuwaiti father, which neither of them were. So they were kind of in no man's land over there, so they kind of tried to prepare ahead of time. And then um, when the U.S. Embassy called, they just got on a plane, and then the plane ended up coming to, to Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, what's funny is after my wife and I met and everything, I think a big reason why a few of the planes from Kuwait did come to Raleigh, North Carolina is because her grandfather, her father's dad, who passed away now, uh, was, was a pretty big name here, like at Shaw University and other things, and a Palestinian activist, um, and, and helped them settle in. And that's why they brought the Palestinians here. Uh, her grandfather was part of that decision. See, for me, like, I know you told that story a million times, but it's so inspiring. I got to believe it's even inspiring for you. It's worth retelling over and over, isn't it, Nas? Yeah, it really is. Um, I, I think my parents are more low key where they don't really like like uh, too much information out there and whatnot. I mean, they're just hard workers. They're, they're proud of who they are and everything. Um, so I try not to tell it too often, but I'm, I'm definitely very, very proud of my family. Um, my, my parents are the hardest working people I know, and, and they sacrifice everything for me and my sisters. And I can't begin to imagine how difficult that was for them. Um, it's something that I get a little emotional just thinking about, but uh, I'm forever grateful to them for that. We're at home with Nazvi Abadawi, and this is home. We're so glad you're back, Naz. As we all know, uh, a little over a year ago, you went to FC Cincinnati. You also tested, I guess, uh, what was going on overseas as well, and then made the ultimate decision to come back. You're going to be back in number 10 jersey. You're going to have the captain's armband back. Just talk about everything that went into the decision to leave for a little bit and then make the decision to come back. Yeah, so um, I played four years here. Uh, I, I loved every single minute that I had here. I really did. It wasn't an easy decision to leave. Um, because I thankfully had a few good seasons, uh, I had teams with interest from MLS and from other teams in the league. Um, FC Cincinnati came in. And I'm not going to lie to you, they made a pitch that was, was impossible to ignore. I mean, not only financially, but what they told me about their style of play and how they wanted me to play and everything. Uh, it, it sounded like everything that I was looking for. So I went there. Um, to be completely honest, my, my wife and I really enjoyed the city. I mean, it was our first time being away from Raleigh for both of us. 
We had a lot of fun. I think it was a great growing experience for both of us. Uh, playing wise was not, I mean, even the first year when I scored 11 goals, I think, uh, playing wise was not what I anticipated it to be. Uh, not to get too much into detail, but there was a lot of false promises, not only myself, but all the players there. Uh, it was, we didn't really have a set system. No one really knew what their role was. And it was, it ended up being a little bit of a nightmare where a few games into the first season, I was looking at potentially leaving anyways. And then, um, once we went to MLS, I was happy to be there. Uh, obviously I was looking at it as a new opportunity, a new year. I think everyone knew FCC was a little bit of a, um, of, of a tough situation last year. And I mean, look, from, from the club side of things, from the front office thing, and, and a few other people on the coaching staff, they're great. And they're awesome people. And I wish the fans there nothing but the best. I wish the players there nothing but the best. And the staff, everyone. I, mean, I want them to do well now. If I'm rooting for a team in MLS, it's going to be FCC. Uh, but I was ready to come back home. My main thing is I just enjoy playing. That, that's my thing. I mean, not, not actually playing, but I enjoy the training aspect. Uh, I enjoy everything. I just enjoy it. I love soccer. And so once we found out my wife was pregnant, um, we, we wanted to come back home. So I reached my, my agent, I had my agent reach back out to Kurt Johnson and Nick Flatter and kind of talk to them. And thankfully they were willing to have me back. And then, so um, it was a no brainer for us to come back home. You heard me in the introduction, call you the man, but also about the part where sometimes people told you, no, I mean, when you were breaking down the youth soccer experience, it wasn't like you're automatically at castle. You had to go a different route before finally they said, this guy's legit. NC State took a little while, and then they realized this guy's legit. You thought for sure MLS took a little while, but you made it happen. When I think about the story of your family, your story is pretty similar in that you were resilient, right? And resiliency builds character. You have great character. I think your mom and dad passed that down to you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, that means a lot. Um... Look, I mean, to, to be honest, like it's, uh, I, pr I probably wasn't good enough at times to be on those top teams. So it was a learning experience, right? You have to learn from, if you get cut from a team, not every single coach in the world is going to like you, right? So you have to learn how to adapt. You have to learn how to be good enough where they have to play you regardless of, of your opinion, of, uh, of if they think you're good enough or not. I mean, that's how good I wanted to be. And then so um, I did. I got cut from Castle at U13. I jumped around a few clubs and then fortunately I landed at uh, Triangle United playing under Elmar Bulowicz, who is a legend in the uh, college soccer game for, for the men's side. And so I learned so much from him just about no excuses, working hard, no nonsense kind of thing. And uh, I think playing for him really helped prepare me for, for the college game. And once I got to NC State, it was the same kind of thing where some things, I mean, sometimes things have to bounce your way as well. And uh, our, our coach at the time, Tarantini, who's a legend, uh, may he rest in peace as well. A uh, really nice guy, and he told me before I came in that I wasn't going to play, so I didn't have any expectations really, other than trying to be a good teammate and, and just enjoying the time with my friends. Um, when he decided to retire and a new coach came in, it was a it was a good thing for me, and that's when I viewed it as a step in the right direction uh, and a new opportunity. And so that's when I got my chance to do that. And then, uh, look, man, I think part of the reason why I, I played so well with with NCFC is just because of how well I'm treated, not only me but my family, and, and all of us are. Um, we're treated so well that we I, I'm so happy here and, and um, it, it just makes it easy to play all right the great Nasby Abadawi I do want to remind people that uh, uh, if I already sent questions in I want to thank them but I do want to remind folks that if they want to send questions in they can send them in the chat line before we go to break Nasby Abadawi I do want to tell you that your former teammate and now my broadcast partner and I'm hoping to get back with him Austin Deleuze is concerned about your hair. He is thinking it's looking a little bit Ryan Seacresty at the moment. And uh, I think you're probably like me because I got a mess as well, right? You can't get a haircut, right? I mean, what am I supposed to do, Austin? What do you, what do you want from me? <laughs> it's a tough life. I was either buzz it all off or let it go out. So, I mean, I don't have any options right now. <laughs> I think it looks great, Naz. You, you can look good anyway. All right, we're going to take a commercial break. We're at home with Nazvi Abadawi, the captain of North Carolina FC. What a great player. What a great guest. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome to Wake Med Children's. Come on. Specialized care for teeny tiny babies. To teens and really sick and hurt kids. By doctors, surgeons, nurses, and support teams. All pediatric trained. And like super nice and a gazillion pediatric specialties even an emergency department just for kids know what i'm feeling better already 
Wake Med Children's, your children's hospital, and a whole lot. Nearly 150 years of experience goes into making each and every Continental tire. So you can trust with total confidence that our tires will deliver superior performance, no matter where the road takes you. Continental Tire, for what you do. Great to be at home with Nazvi Abadawi. Great to have Nazvi Abadawi home. That will be repeated quite a bit during this edition at home with. Great to be doing this entire session as we've been doing two a week, one with a North Carolina FC player, one with a North Carolina Courage player. I got to tell you, Naz, it's been a lot of fun doing this because, like you said, I'd rather be in the broadcast booth, but at least we're doing something and we're getting to know the players a little bit better, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, I think for, for us as players, too, it's given us an opportunity to really expand our knowledge on everything. I mean, uh, of course, we're working out individually and on our own, and now we're allowed to start small group training. But for a while, we didn't really have much to do other than the short workout on our own, you know. So we, I mean, for me personally, I'm, I'm currently doing my MBA, so I was concentrating on that. Um, I know my teammates have started doing different things as well just to keep themselves engaged. So it, it's a crazy time for sure. But I mean, I think everyone on on at least the men's side and those that's spoken to on the women's side have been doing a great job of making it a positive. How cool has it been to have both a men's pro team and arguably the best women's pro team in the world together? Yeah, so first of all, I think it is the best women's team, in my opinion, best women's team in the world. Um, secondly, it, it is cool. I mean, look, uh, I know quite a few of them, and they're all really great girls, great players, and um, great people as well. Um, it's one of the coolest things that Steve has done. I always mention that, and then I mentioned the fact that he combined Castle and CFC into the largest youth pro system in the nation. So uh, Steve's been great, obviously, but bringing in the courage was a pretty cool step. And I mean, just bringing world championships home to uh, to carry North Carolina is, is pretty cool, man. And, um, and it's funny because my wife, I think, like she knows quite a few of them and just from seeing them around or whatnot, and they're all so nice to her. And then she'll be like, oh my God, like she just played in the World Cup or she just won a World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and then because my wife used to play soccer too, but it's definitely a cool experience. I do the same thing when I'm breaking down that team. I mean, every player, they just are so unique and big personalities. And I think Dabinia can end up being like a Barta before she's done. Denise O'Sullivan, what she does. And then, of course, all the great Americans. I'm glad you mentioned the merger because I did want you, Nazmi, particularly since you said part of the reason why you enjoy it so much is because everybody treats you so well. There have been a lot of people that have made an impact in your life this question's tough because you don't want to miss anybody, but as you think about some people that really have watched out for you and guided you and, and led you in the right direction outside of your family, we know your family's top notch, but who are some people that come to mind, Nas? Yeah, um, one person for me is, is uh, Dewan Bader, who, who was our old assistant coach and um, was a U23 coach when I was at NC State. He was, he was a big factor for me. Uh, then there's a couple other names, Damon Nahas, who is currently the assistant women's coach at UNC. His brother Sean is on the is on the staff for the for the Courage team actually. But Damon Nahas had a big role in my life very early on. Um, Scotty Schweitzer, who is the first ever Real Hogs coach, um, and then and, and coaches at next level now. He he is also very influential. And then I mean the, I can I, I've been blessed to meet a lot of good role models. Henry Gutierrez is, is awesome um there it can really go I had a coach Billy English B I mean Mike Moltz man I can go on all day Elmar Bola which is a big one as well that I have to mention and then you look at my college coaches with Kelly Finley with uh Dave Costa and Stephen Cox they were all great to me as well so I've, I've been blessed to have some great coaches on my way up and then um I've learned everything from every coach I've ever had uh except for maybe <laughs> except for maybe one um but so I've learned from every every single mm -hmm. coach I've ever had and that's something I'm very grateful for all right I'm glad you also mentioned the tie into NC State because that's where we're, we're going to go to next yesterday we had Haley Mace on talking about the fact that North Carolina Courage is basically UCLA East we are becoming really connected to the Wolfpack we should we're so close to NC State I'm I love calling games for NC State. I love working for George Kiefer and what they're doing now, the new coach for NC State. Besides you, we have three other players on the roster from NC State. Kurt Johnson 
was a big time player at NC State. That guy was a leader in the back, led the team to the College Cup, and uh, you know, huge impact from NC State. We're going to show you some players on the team right now from NC State. Talk a little bit about them and your love for the Wolfpack. Oh, man. Uh, so I, I think the first one on is Manny Perez, right? And look, I think Manny, I think everyone knows the potential that Manny has. Uh, he might be the fastest player or one of the fastest players that I've had the opportunity to play with. And I mean, he's so dynamic on the right side. Um, he's someone I think that if we can get him to continue to work hard and, and keep a good mentality that he can have a great future in the game. And I think we're all very proud of him being a local kid and also signing for Celtic, obviously, and now playing for us. Uh, and Manny knows I'm going to push him every single day to, to continue to get better. And I'm kind of going to be a little bit annoying to him, you know, just to help him reach his potential, hopefully. But uh, Manny's someone that has great, great potential. Connor Donovan, we also showed some footage of him, I do believe, and Caleb DuBernay as well. Yep. So Con Don uh, obviously had, I mean, I remember when I was playing at State, you would hear names like Connor Donovan and Caleb DuVernay for big recruits that they wanted to bring in. Even after I was done playing, I heard about them. Um, and even knowing that I was going to be graduated already, I knew who they were. They were huge names. I'll start with Connor Donovan, who um, was a huge name around the area. You know, everyone knew Connor, extremely talented player who had uh, options to go play around the world. And then so it was great for him to come play at MC State. And then uh, from that, he deservedly went pro. Um, Obviously, he had, a, he had an injury or two in the professional ranks, but, man, it's great to have him because I think he's going to be a big help to us as a team. I think now having competition in the back pushes everyone to be even better. Um, and, and I think he, he's someone as well that brings leadership to and can really help the team. And then the last one I'll, I'll say is Caleb DuVernay. Caleb is hilarious. Um, he's one of the funniest guys on the team, but he's also one of the quietest guys on the team. <laughs> on the team. Uh, he is an animal. I mean, he can run all day. He can probably do 100 pull-ups, 2,000 sit-ups. I mean, he, this guy is an absolute animal physically. Um, and he's such a nice guy as well. He's a country boy, you know, and he lets us know it. Um, loves his fishing, loves his hunting and stuff like that. Loves to cut down trees, like, uh, for, for, um, for fires and whatnot. But, I mean, he's a great guy that also, I think, has a, has a big job to do filling in for Aaron Bean and between him and uh, Akeem Ward, I think, that uh, we've done a great job of replacing Aaron. Great breakdown of the NC State connection. Austin Deleuze piping in again, basically saying he loves the Wolfpack too, especially playing against them. Obviously, he had great success at Wake Forest. But you know what? As part of being a teammate, right, you're allowed to talk a little trash, right, Nas? Is there any way we can get Austin off this thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's starting to take over Austin Deleuze. That's, uh, you know what? He's going to be great in the broadcast booth, though. I mean, we did that first game with him. He was really phenomenal, by the way. No, Austin's Austin's awesome, man. Great teammate, uh, great person, amazing player, obviously. Someone I've always looked up to. I mean, even since I remember, it's funny you're bringing up uh, him playing against NC State because we went to a game, me and my father, when I was in high school. And then uh, Wake Forest beat NC State. And I remember my dad just pointing out, it was actually Deleuze at the time, who I didn't know who it was. And he was like, that guy's good. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, so funny I got to play with him. I learned a lot from him, but um, man, that guy can be annoying sometimes. Hey, since we mentioned your hair, somebody just piped in a question that says, who has the greatest hair in NCFC Railhawks history and why is it Paul Hamilton? Clearly a loaded question. <laughs> so I never got to play with Paul. Um, I trained with him once or twice but I never actually personally got to play with him. But, you know, I, I think I'd agree with that. His hair was was so smooth, it seemed like, and uh, he did a great job taking care of it from from what I could see on the outside. What do you think of the birthday boy's new haircut? Uh, Robbie Cristo had a birthday a few days ago. Yeah, I mean, look, I, don't, I, I tell Rob all the time, I don't care what you do to your hair off the field. I don't care how wild you can be, like, with, with uh, your hair or anything like that. Um, as long as you're scoring goals, you can paint your hair purple. You know, I don't care what you do. Um, but, but no, I think it looks okay. Um, Rob's one of those characters where he can do that. So uh, overall, not too bad. Well, and I want to dig deeper into that as well, Nazmi, because with you, I think it's fair to say, as the face of the franchise, you, I've always admired the way you carry yourself. And I think that, again, is a reflection of your family and how you grew up. As you know, with every team there are different characters different personalities I always wondered someone like you who's in the locker room and 
as time has evolved, you have evolved into a great leader. But there got to be times when you're in the locker room and somebody's acting a little bit off because everybody kind of dances to their own drum. Do you ever just sit there and be like, man, <laughs> this guy's a little crazy, and then you, but you just learn to accept it, right? I mean, I'm sure there's been those situations, right? A hundred percent. There, there is different characters in every locker room. Uh, the one we have right now is isn't too bad, thankfully. But no, you have to learn how to adapt. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as they're doing jo- their job on the field, you can't really complain about what they're doing off the field. Um, but no, I think that's the most difficult thing about a leader, about being a leader, is figuring out what motivates each individual and what really pushes them to be their best. And uh, I mean, you have to you have to speak with people differently. Some guys you need to bark at them and kind of get them going, whereas other guys you probably need to pull them aside and not yell at them in front of other people. You know, everyone's a little bit different. Um, and that's the hardest thing to gauge as a leader. So you're still relatively young. Austin Deleuze is an old timer now, you know, so we can't even call him Benjamin Button. But last week we had Weaven Stephen Miller on and he was talking about how he's looking around going, wow, I'm the old guy now. You're not at that point. You still, and neither is Stephen. And I told him that, but I think you get where I'm going now. When you bring in these youngsters do you take on a little bit more responsibility to help the real young players on the team yeah for sure i try to pull the academy guys aside and, and even text them and whatnot every now and then just let them know like what it means to be a pro and um even though they're signed to academy contracts with with obviously you know they're still going to go to college i tell them look you signed essentially a pro contract you need to act like a pro we're going to hold you to the same standard and so uh i try to help them out as much as i can or, or take some of the younger guys out to lunch every now and then and just talk to them and see how they're doing um, but I mean, look, uh, we've had some young guys in the past that were difficult as pros and I don't think they really got it, but thankfully having such a young locker room, it's been great to see how mature everyone is and how, how good of pros, uh, almost everyone is in the locker room. All right. As we take one more question before we go to break, I'm going to go back to your maturity and tie it to you now getting number 10 back because one of the things that I saw when you came back you kind of took this role of sort of just being grateful to be back, but you didn't just come right back in and say, yo, I'm the boss. And you didn't say, give me number 10 back or any of that. So kind of a double question. Talk about your approach last year as you took some time to sort of mesh back in. You really didn't say, Nas, hey, look at me, I'm back. You just came back, did your job, took your time, Took a little bit of time to get going. And I remember being on the air saying that is the Nasvi Abadawi that I remember. And just talk about how that was because it had to be a unique transition because you also came back to a new coach as well after experiencing what sounds like a rough coach uh, during your time at FC Cincinnati, or at least a rough time for lack of a better word, and then end it with how you got number 10 back this year. Yeah, so to be completely honest, the biggest problem is when I came back from FCC is I wasn't um, I wasn't game fit. I wasn't I wasn't anywhere close to being game fit, and that affected the way I played. It affected my entire um, regime. I mean, the way I go about everything. Um, and then so that was the main thing I had to do. I had to get fit. And then on top of that, I was coming into a new locker room. You know, with with that's halfway through a season. Uh, I didn't want to be the MLS guy that or the guy coming back from MLS that's coming in and uh, acting like he's a man or like acting like he runs the place kind of thing. So I try to keep uh, my head down, just work hard and and just do what I always do. You know, try to lead by example if I can and and just give it everything I got to help the team win. Uh, Thankfully, the guys welcome me in. I mean, there are obviously a few guys that I knew before, but the rest of the guys welcome me in. And and Dave did such a great job of of making me feel settled along with Bradford. I mean, uh, the coaching staff is amazing. And so they helped me as well in. Towards the end of the season, I think you could really tell that I was getting more into a rhythm and I was starting to feel good again, starting to feel like my old self. Uh, and then about number 10, so uh, I wasn't really planning. I mean, I, I was planning on wearing five possibly because that's why I wore my first two years. I knew Benny was coming back. Um, and then Platters went uh, texted me. I was like, hey, do you know if uh, like you or Ben are going to wear 10? And so I was like, huh. So I texted Ben and I was like, hey, uh, are you going to wear 10 if you want to? No big deal. Like you wore it last year. You deserve You did really well. You deserve to wear it again. And Ben was like, oh, let me think about it. Maybe I'll let Leo pick my new, my new number, um, his, his little his little four-year-old boy. And then so uh, I was like, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And then um, Benny got back to me, and he was so nice. He's like, hey, man, you can have 10. I'm going to wear 17. Uh, and, and he was, I mean, so nice about it. I still owe him a nice steak for that. But <laughs> Ben's a great guy, so I wouldn't expect anything less. He, you know, I am going to ask one more question because I do like the way Ben Spees carries himself as well. I've been so impressed with him 
because he also doesn't seek the limelight. Here's a guy who's won two national championships in college. What a great pro he is. Oh my God. Amazing person. Uh, he's another one where I played against him in college. I mean, it's funny. Sometimes I joke around with him. I'm like, not a bad, not a bad college career, huh? Score the game winning goal in Akron, win a championship there, come to UNC, score some game winning goals there, win a national championship. And then you think, eh, this is too easy. I'm gonna go pro. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then he went pro, obviously played for Columbus and, and had a great career, and has had a great career so far that's still going on. And I mean, it's great that we have him here in North Carolina because his knowledge of the great of the game is brilliant. His vision is unbelievable. And, uh, and I'm really enjoying playing with him. As you can tell folks at home, I have mad respect for Nasby Abadawi. It's great to be at home with number 10, Nasby Abadawi. We'll take a break and we'll come back and talk a little bit about his work now with the Palestine national team. Pretty cool stuff at home with Nas. At Coastal Credit Union, we offer financial services, but we're not a bank, and that's a good thing. Here's why. Banks answer to Wall Street. At Coastal, we're owned by our members. That means we answer to you. Banks charge their customers inflated, unnecessary fees to increase their profits. We actually share our profits with our members through higher dividends, better rates, and lower fees. Find out more about how we're different than banks and how we work harder for you and your money at bankbetter.org. Welcome back to At Home with the great Nazmi Abadawi. Hopefully you were here at the top to hear some of the goal calls. Love when this young man scores. He had high aspirations and he has delivered the goods time and time again for the club. Great to be with you, Naz. And, you know, you talked about your time with FC Cincinnati. It wasn't all that great. But one thing that was pretty cool was you got a great picture with Wayne Rooney, who I thought was <laughs> amazing during his time at MLS. I think. Jorge Acuna has this picture. There it is. Wayne Rooney and Nazmi Abadawi going at it. What was that like? It was cool, man. Uh, Rooney is one of my favorite players purely because of his work rate. He's obviously an unbelievable goal scorer and uh, one of the best forwards to ever play. But he worked so hard off the ball and so unselfish that he's someone that I've always looked up to. And uh, it was cool to get to play against him. So as a broadcaster, as you know, I've always counted on the ability to be able to call the coaches and the players before the games. And you're always one of those guys that I can call. Austin obviously was while he was playing, Stephen Miller and that type of thing. And you always kind of set me straight on how the team's going and how you're doing. And one of the things you said early on in one of our conversations where you've always been very candid with me, and by the way, I appreciate it every time, Nas, just so you know, is you said you have a goal of playing for the national team. And at the time, I think maybe you were even thinking about the U.S. national team, but it doesn't matter. You're now playing for a national team. Walk us through that experience and what it means, because guess what, Nas? Not too many people get to say that they represent their full national team. Look, I think everyone knows how much I love NCFC and playing for the club. Uh, playing for the national team has been the best experience that I've, I've had as a player. Seeing what it means to the Palestinian people, especially there in Palestine, I mean that are obviously in, in a little bit of a war zone or going through a tough time. I mean, the games there are a different passion. They really are. Uh, the fans there, the, the games are free. So everyone shows up and I mean, they just go crazy in the stadium. When we win, they're so happy. And then uh, I, I got, I was able to play in the Asian cup with them in Dubai. And even we were losing to Australia at three zero and we have 30,000 Palestinians in the fans that are chanting and jumping up and down and we're losing three zero and just having the time of their lives. Um, and so it's been the best experience that I've ever had in my life. And uh, I'm very grateful that I have the opportunity to do it. And I'm looking forward to being able to play with them again, hopefully. Yeah. So how do you keep that connectivity with the national team? How do you let them know how you're doing? And obviously the whole world is in this situation, but what's the deal? How does that work? When, when is the next FIFA window and will you go back and what do you know about future steps with the national team? 
Yeah, so right now we're in a tough position, obviously. Um, we were supposed to have World Cup qualifiers in March that obviously got postponed. We were supposed to have World Cup qualifiers in June that got postponed. Now they're saying there's going to be a West Asian Football Federation. Basically, all the Middle Eastern countries uh, are playing in a tournament in Dubai in January. So if things are better by then or if it's safe, uh, I plan on going to that. Hopefully, since we'll be in offseason anyways. Uh, if not, then it could be canceled too. I mean, it's so hard to really know what's going to happen with, with COVID-19. But I stay in touch with them quite often. They do a great job of watching our games or at least the highlights and seeing uh, how I'm doing. And then on top of that, just via WhatsApp and sending voice memos, uh, I talk to them quite frequently. So that's incredible. And when you're with them, where do they have you? In the middle of the field, just like we see you for North Carolina FC, where do you play for them? Yeah, they play me as a 10. Uh, purely as a 10 and then so uh, it, it's a lot of fun to be able to have similar roles with, within both teams and, uh, and thankfully they're playing me in a spot that I love to play at. Tell us about the makeup of the team are there some players that are playing elsewhere in big clubs or what's the story there? Yeah we have a player that's playing in a pretty and I think they finished fourth in the Egyptian Premier League last year and he was their leading goal scorer uh, he's a striker we have another striker who's playing in the top league in Switzerland um, we have a couple guys that play in Sweden and then uh, one guy that plays in the top league in Morocco, which is unbelievable because they get like 80,000 fans. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, I mean, guys are pretty spread out after that. Uh, we, we have quite a few that play in the Palestinian league. Um, a couple may play in Indonesia, which is actually a decent league. And uh, so they're, they're all over the place, uh, but they're all very, very good players. I was extremely impressed with the level and uh, I'm definitely feeling like I'm getting better every time I go. Are you the only player right now on the national team that has been, quote, Americanized, or are there others that have American connections? There's one guy who moved to Chicago for about 10 years um, and grew up here and went to college here. Uh, and then now he's, him and his family all moved back to Palestine. Uh, and he's an amazing guy. I mean, he doesn't, even, he doesn't have an accent or anything like that. When he, a lot of the guys don't speak English. He speaks perfect English with perfect English and no accent. So uh, I, I talked to him probably the most often on the team. Uh, and so he's the one with the most American ties. Make sure our fans, Oak City supporters as well, understand the relationship right now between Palestine and the United States. How is it and what uh, do your teammates say about that relationship? Yeah, it's not much for the United States, to be honest. It's funny because my teammates, uh, seeing what they go through, me having a United States passport uh, makes it easier for me to travel in and out of Israel to get to Palestine. My teammates have a very difficult time. Like, for example, if we play a game in Palestine and we have to go to an away game, uh, they have to leave a different, a completely different way than, than those of us with foreign passports, passports do. Um, so they just joke around with me and they're like, man, the U.S. passport, that's a golden ticket right there. And like, they'll say things like that. But no, I mean, it's cool to see how passionate they are and how optimistic they are about everything. I mean, how happy they are in general with, with everything that they deal with. Uh, Again, it's very humbling and very uh, motivating to see. Let me just say congratulations on making it to the national team because I'll never forget you telling me that that was your goal and you've done that, Nas. That is huge. Well done, you. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Yeah. Couldn't do it without you, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. I'll tell you, one people, the people we can't do it without are the Oak City supporters and the great fans. We'll take their questions. When we return one more break, we're at home with Nazmi Abadawi. from now you'll be a little older a year from now you'll be a little wiser will you be stronger your best is not behind you look forward Final segment at home with Nasby Abadawi. We have extended our time with him. He's probably getting the hook from his wife to say, hey, it's time to get on baby duty. Nas, thanks for uh, going a little bit deeper. We usually try to go about 45 minutes. We're going to go a little bit longer 
And uh, that's not because you're talking too much. It's because you are super interesting. I assure you of that. Uh, we now go to the segment where the great fans send in questions. Before we get to their questions, you've had a great relationship with these fans for a long time. You were one of the fans for a long time, which I think even makes that tie even stronger. Talk about your relationship with the fans, if you can, Nas. I love our fans, man. Uh, I really do. They're always there for us, no matter what. I mean, rain or shine, they're out there. They're so supportive. I mean, even if we lose a game and we're not happy about it, I can't tell you how many guys, how many of our fans in the stands, uh, the men and women, even the kids are like, you'll get them next time. Don't worry. Like, like you got this. Come on, we'll win next time. And, and it's amazing to hear. It makes us want to win for the fans. Uh, obviously, as competitors, we never want to lose and we want to always give it our all. But knowing that our fans have our backs no matter what, it, it really means the world to us. And now that you're a pro and a national team member, you could be one of those guys that says, no, nah, I don't have time for autographs. Tell us your philosophy on spending a little bit of time after the game, signing autographs, meeting the young fans, the people that want to touch you and get your autograph and spend a little time with you. No, look, I'll stay out there and sign autographs uh, until no one wants. I mean, I sign every single autograph that I can uh, after every game. That's my, unless it's like pouring down rain, in which case most people are gone anyways. Right. Uh, but I try to sign every single autograph after every game. Uh, who am I not to sign an autograph when I used to beg for autographs too? <laughs> I mean, like, what? Uh, why wouldn't I kind of thing? And so um, that, that's my personal philosophy. All right, I love it. All right, let's get to these questions that were sent in and some that are on the chat line. Here we go. Do you ever go back and watch goals on YouTube? <laughs> um, so to be honest, the one time I did was when I was in FC Cincinnati. I wasn't getting along with the coach very well. Uh, it was a situation where they told me that uh, their system kind of uh, uses the 10 as a decoy. And I'm sitting there thinking, why'd they bring a 10 in? You know what I mean? Like, why'd they recruit me so much? And then uh, just to build up some confidence, I went and watched back a few of my goals and be like, okay, I, I can do some cool stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. What is something you said you would do if you have the time, but now that you still have the time, you haven't done it. So something you're like, man, I'm going to do this. Uh, I think Stephen Miller said he needed to get some painting done. What is something you said you would do if you had the time, but you still haven't done it? So when my wife and I moved from Cincinnati to Raleigh, uh, we have a guest bed and some other furniture that we couldn't fit in our apartment at our parents at our parents' house. And then now that we're now that we moved into our home, we have all the room in the world with nothing to do. And every single time we go over there, we're like, eh, we'll get it next time. We'll get it. <laughs> Great answer. If you weren't a soccer player, what would your dream job be, Nazmi Abadawi? That's funny, Matt. <laughs> It's such a hard decision. Uh, are we doing no athletes at all? Because I love basketball. So I'd love to be an NBA player, but obviously that's not going to happen. Um, you know, it's funny because when you think about when you're done playing, what you want to do, and that's what I'll turn the question kind of into. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it'd be cool to be a professor or something like that, but, but we'll see. Okay. It's interesting because Stephen Miller also said he wanted to be an NBA player. I wanted to be an NBA player. Who's got a better shot, you or Stephen Miller? Steven has a better shot, I think, but I would beat him 1v1. I play kind of unorthodox, but, but I'm, I'm putting my money on myself here. So when you say unorthodox, that to me, I picture somebody that maybe likes to back you down or something, or do you get to the rim, or what do you do? No, I mean, I think the best way for you to picture it would be imagining, just imagine that I didn't grow up here, and I grew up in an Arab country with no basketball, <laughs> and, I, and I shoot that way. <laughs> sometimes can... go in, he'll sometimes go in, thankfully. No um, and, and like, cause I'm competitive, I always have close games, uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to shoot it like Steph Curry or anything like that for sure. All right. Great story. All right. One more question here that we got before the show. If you were not, well, actually, um, it's the same question, I guess in a different way. If you were not playing professional soccer, what do you think you'd be doing? So dream job or what do you be doing? sounds like maybe you'd want to be a professor. I got to have Jorge screen these questions a little better. <laughs> or something in the business world. Uh, currently doing my MBA. So anything in marketing or sales or I don't know, I want to keep playing until NCFC kicks me off the team. So we'll deal with that when the time comes. All right, cool. And then there was one question or comment about um, people being jealous about my U.S. national team jersey right there, the 1994 jersey signed by the team. That is pretty cool, right, Nas? That's unbelievable, man. I tell you what, I noticed that before you even told me about it. And it is one of the coolest things to have in your in your office. It just means I'm old, I think, Nas. <laughs> it means experience, and you're very good at your job. So if that was 94, what year were you born? I was born in 91. 
Now, okay, so you were three years old when the World Cup was going on here in, yeah, I was in three the United years old. States. Okay, well, it was a game changer for me. It was actually the time I met Kurt Johnson because Kurt was the main man for Adidas as well. So I've known him forever, and those ties are phenomenal. So it's been great to be able to work for him for such a long time. And as you said before, that tie with NC State, that's pretty cool, right? Oh, yeah, it's unbelievable. Kurt's a great guy, um, great GM, and uh, him being a state connection makes me like him even more. All right, Nazmi, as we sign off with you and knowing that you are the face of the franchise and knowing that you've accepted that role, you've welcomed that role, you're a role model now to all of us, young and old. This is a time more than ever that we need inspiring messages. We need to be reflective. Before we sign off, what is your message to maybe some people that are struggling right now and they want what we all want, and that is to get back to normal life and I guess at our core right here, get back to playing soccer. Your final message, Naz, uh, as you uh, look into the camera at home with Nazmi Abadawi. Yeah, so first of all, I just want to say I hope everyone is staying safe and their families are safe and they're uh, following protocols about everything that they do, if not for yourselves and for other people's safety as well. Um, on top of that, if, if you are healthy and everything and you are getting a little bit stir crazy at home, what I told my wife is I don't think we're ever going to have a time like this again where it's me, my wife, and my son at home all day together and really being able to enjoy this time. I mean, if I'm not out traveling, playing a game or anything like that, she's, she's going to be working. So this is really the only opportunity we have to all be together and all be at home and, and just really enjoy this time. And so uh, I know that things are a little bit crazy right now, but you're not alone in it. You're not alone thinking it. If you ever need anyone to talk to, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out via Twitter or anything like that. Um, I'd love to help any way I, I reasonably could. Um, but I think that stay positive. Um, the end hopefully is closer than further away. Uh, we don't really know what's happening, but uh, main thing, just stay safe. I like that. Enjoy what you have, right? And you've got a great family, so enjoy it indeed. And speaking of that, one of the things I do want to thank you, Nas, for always being accessible for me, helping me do my job. I've always appreciated it, and uh, I want to share that with you. It's been really great getting to know you and your story and see your growth and now playing for the national team. We are all so proud of you, Nas. It has been an honor to be at home with you. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you. I can't thank you enough for all that you do. And Jorge, uh, Jorge in the background, thank you for everything that you do for us as well. Well said. At home with Nasby Abadawi, once again, I want to thank all of our corporate partners. We'll keep you updated on our next at home with. Thanks for being with us, everybody. And how about North Carolina FC?